Hello again, brethren. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, and turn into your King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Go to Matthew chapter 9. <clears throat> Before we uh, get into this, bow your head with me and let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Father, please forgive me of my sin. Please forgive me of my wickedness, my oh, my wretchedness, Lord. And uh, Lord, please get me out of the way, Lord, that Thou, O Lord, may be glorified. That Thou, O Lord, may speak unto this congregation, that you will be heard, Lord, through I, a sinner who is chief. Please, Lord, guide me in the way that you would have me to go to speak. Uh, open the uh, eyes, the ears, and the hearts of those who may hear this, uh, this video. Please guide me in all truth and uh, like I said, Lord, I, I can't do this, Lord. I'm incapable of doing this. I can't do this. But Thou, O Lord, for You all things are possible. Bless this reading of Scripture. Please be with us today. And merciful Father, Lord Jesus Christ, may You be glorified. Your will be done. And we ask this in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. Matthew chapter 9, in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. We're going to look at one verse here in Matthew chapter 9. And um, I received a little help for this. Thank you. Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. And he entered into a ship and passed over, and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, laying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, we will be reading on to verses 1, uh, on to verses 3, on to verse 8 now. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is, for whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Now this is reiterated in Mark chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 1 under verse 12. I've already covered this in a previous video, but we're leading into something. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 12. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them, lowercase w. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they led down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. 
But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, and reasoned in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sin? Who can forgive sins but God the Son only? And <clears throat> Who can forgive sins but God only? One God. One God. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Only one God. Only one God. Verse 8. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Jesus Christ is God the Father, and only God can forgive sins. If you uh, believe the truth of Scripture, the um, scriptural Godhead, you get this. If you're a Trinitarian, you're going to struggle. Oh, no, no, it's God the Son who is equal to the Father, but not the Father. I'm going to kind of address that a little bit more in detail in another video. But, go back to Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Son. Jesus called him son. They obviously had, the, had faith on him as their king. Because they broke up the roof to let him down. Right? So Jesus refers to this man as son. Go to John. Now, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 14. John chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 14. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. By grace are ye saved through faith. And the word, capital W, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Look at verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on on his name. Believed on his name. The Lord Jesus Christ. Romans. Romans chapter 8. If you are saved, born again, You are sealed unto the day of redemption in this dispensation of time of the Gentiles. You have God living within you. The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost, one God. 
comprised of three parts. Spirits, body, okay? But, if you are saved and born again, you are a son of God. And if you are a woman, you are his daughter. Let's read this. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 on to verse 23. Of course, follow me along. I hope you are. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 on to verse 23. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit, capital S, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, capital S, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit, lowercase s, of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit, capital S, of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children and heirs heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And into that I say, Amen. How about you? For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Very interesting. Very interesting. Hold on. Let's keep reading. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the capital S Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. The redemption of our body. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. And you look at verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Okay? And over here, verse 23, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. See, if you are saved today, born again, you are a son of God, you or you are his daughter, okay? We are children of the Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ. He is our Father. So that makes us his sons and his daughters. And go to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 4 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 14 on to verse 16. How? How are you become sons and daughters? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 14 on to verse 16. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. 
For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. That's an RKSF, of course. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Look at that. Go back now, verse 15. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1-4. through 4, That Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? You come to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner. Believe on him for what he did on the cross for you and call on his name. Call on, him, call on his name. Humble yourself. Call on his name. You're saved. You come to him as a repentant sinner. You believe on him and call on him. It's not that difficult. And hold your place there. Go back now to John chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 14. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And today, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. Lower case up. For in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you, through the gospel. Begotten you through the gospel. Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 on to verse 6 Ephesians chapter 1 Verses 3 on to verse 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the soul of the Godhead, who hath blessed us with all spiritual, spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. See, that's how Jesus is the Father, because the Father dwelleth within him, the soul, the Godhead. It's very simple. Let's continue. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now that's not predestination as pertaining to Calvinism. No. What that means is through the gospel that Paul preaches today in this, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? It's not the Calvinistic predestination. Okay? That's not what it is. The gospel, that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you come to him as a broken, contrite sinner, and you believe what he did for you, believe on him, for what he did for you on the cross. Believe on him, call on him, and thou shalt be saved. It's very easy. It's not that difficult. Okay? It's not that difficult. That, the gospel for today in the time of the Gentiles, that is our predestination. Not that our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, is like, okay, you're safe, you're safe, you're safe. You're not, you're not, you're not. No, 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 no. He would have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Yes, every single person, spirit, soul, and body, has the chance to get saved. Some won't because their hearts are hardened and they've made their choice. But that's not the Calvinistic predestination thing. 
That's heresy. And not one of the Church of the Living God preaches the Calvinistic predestination. Not one. No, not even one. Let's continue. <clears throat> Picking up in verse 4 again. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, <clears throat> that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Let's read that part again. Let's read it slowly. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved. Jump now to verses 11 and 12. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 16. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each other let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now right there, that does not, that has nothing to do with <laughs> the make-believe heretical trinity. No. Jesus Christ is God the Father. But let, let's keep, let's keep reading. But made himself of no rep reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Hold your place there. Go to Timothy. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Hold your place here. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without contra oh, I beg your pardon, brethren. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God the Son was manifest in the flesh. <clears throat> Excuse me. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit seen of angels, preached on to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. A lot of modern Bible perversions, Bible perversions, 
take out God and say he was manifest in the flesh. God. God. One God. Spirit, soul, and body was manifest in the flesh. That's one. Go back now to Philippians. Verse 7, But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. God the Father humbled himself and became a man. The Word made flesh. You know, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Not one in essence, not one in being, not one in nature. One. The Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Now I'm going to hit these uh, verses here in another video I'm making today, but we're going to read them again here right now. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is, is Lord to the glory of God the Father because he is the Father wherefore my beloved as as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling work out not meaning work to be saved work it out Work it out. It's a process. Yes, it is. Yes, things, there are a lot of things, actually, that the Lord will, when he comes into you, uh, and you are sealed into the day of redemption, that he's like, okay, get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of that. And he will clean it up just like that. There are some things that we struggle with. Yes. Yes. But that's why he says, work out doesn't mean that you are working to be saved. Verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that ye may be blameless and harmless the Son of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain neither lab labored in vain okay Jesus Christ is God the Father. He is my Lord and Savior. He is my Father. Hence, I'm His Son. You, woman, saved and born again, Jesus Christ is your God and Father. Hence, you are His daughter. Hold on one second, brethren. As you can hear, my alarm's going off. All right, sorry about that, brethren. The joys of communal living. <laughs> but again, Jesus is God's Father. If God is my Father, I am His Son. Jesus Christ is God the Father. And what do we see here? Wherefore God hath, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And if you are a woman, Jesus Christ is God the Father. You are a father. You are his daughter. See. Not that very hard to, to figure out, is it? Let's continue to 1 John chapter 3 now. 1 John chapter 3. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 12. First John chapter 3 verses 1 on to verse 12. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Know who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're going to expound on these two verses here uh, a little bit more in pretty big detail, but we're going to wait, uh, hold on to that until we get through uh, the rest of this, okay? So... We're going to dig a little deeper in verses 1 and 2 here, but let's continue. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Now right here, I, I did a, a whole video on this a while ago. I forget what it's called. Um, uh, sinless perfection, I believe it is. Okay, This is talking about the indwelling spirit, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit. You have God the Father living within you. Okay, that is what he is talking about here. Let's read. On the verse 12. Whoso committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. What is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. There's your definition. Let's continue. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Who is to him? Who is manifested? God was manifest in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father. And in him is no sin. No kidding. Let's continue. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Now it says no man has seen God at any time. Okay? You and I today, we cannot see the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously. But when people were looking at Jesus Christ in the flesh, God the Father couldn't see the soul. Okay? Let's continue. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Let's continue. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. The Lord. And the Lord is that spirit. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. The Holy Ghost that is within you is not going to, number one, speak contrary to the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. The true and real scriptures. The Holy Ghost. The Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. The Lord is that spirit. It's not going to contradict his word. Number one. 
Number two, the Lord is not going to guide you into sin. He's not going to do so. People may want to choose sin, but he will say, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. You, fine, you want to do it? Go ahead. Go ahead, have at you. He'll give you over to it. But he's not going to guide you into it. So when you see this, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. You know, you're born again, right? And when you are saved, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. You have God the Father living within you. God's not going to guide you into sin. Again, he's not holding a gun to your head. Neither is the devil holding a gun to your head, forcing you to do these things. No, you have free will. Okay? But, he's not going to guide you into sin. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. Hold your place here. Ephesians. Oh, of, of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, I already covered this in that video about sinless perfection. I, I may link it in this one. I'm not sure. We'll see. But. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 on the verse 14. And you wondered why we skipped it. Right? Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. And whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase, purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Until we're caught up the resurrection. See? Get it? Go back now to uh, 1 John, chapter 3, still in verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. His seed, the Holy Ghost, get it? And the Lord is that spirit? You have God the Father? It, this is simple. You get it, right? Okay, let's continue. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. He circle that. I, look, I, some of you don't want to mark in your Bible. At least write the verse out on a piece of paper and then circle it. Okay? This is important because you run into people who talk about you got to stop sinning. Uh, what's that guy name? Um, uh, what, what, uh, uh, Rob Comfort? No. Ray Comfort, right? Sinless perfection? Stop sinning? What's that other weirdo guy? Um, Levi Price? Gotta stop sinning? John Boshoff, who was frying in hell, said, Gotta stop sinning? Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. Again, God is not going to guide you into sin. If you resist him, if you want to take this book and not uh, walk by it according to faith and practice, okay, you don't want to hold, um, hold yourself or be held accountable to the standards of this book, the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, um, he'll give you over to it. He's not going to guide you into it. God's not going to guide you into sin because and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Okay? In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil 
you shall know them by their fruits. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth his brother. Circle that. I have it underlined. I have it underlined here. Circle it. Circle that. <laughs> it's gonna, this, this is going to come up in another video that I'm going to be doing today. Definitely. Okay, let's read that again. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Now note this. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. And slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. And his brother's righteous. And then, let's read this. We're going to continue. On to verse 16 now. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Fakes, those who are of the world, who call themselves Christians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Isaiah Isaiah chapter 49. Oh, fingers work with me. Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49 verses 13 on to verse 23. Isaiah 49, 13 on to verse 23. Under the law, which was faith and works, another dispensation. Okay, today it is by grace through faith. Okay, but let's read this. Thank you, part. Isaiah forty-nine verses thirteen under verse twenty-three. Sing, O heavens. And be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Now he's, this is for a different dispensation. This is instruction in righteousness. Okay, his people. Who are his people? The Jews. Okay, we are grafted into that tree. But right here he's specifically talking about the Jewish people. Well, let's learn a little something, shall we? But Zion said, see, the Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Right there you have a pretty good promise that the, our Lord and Father Jesus Christ is not done with his people, the Jew. Unlike what Roman Catholicism teaches. Guys like um, Anders, uh, Anderson and many others. Replacement theology. Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? 
Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. And right here, you gotta love this one. You looking at that? Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Um, I think it's in Zechariah um, where it says um, something about how uh, wounded in my hands. Okay, and right here in verse 16, I have graven thee upon the palm, palms of my hands. Here's a little uh, thing that kind of a uh, pet peeve of mine. You will see certain pictures, graven images of people depicting the Lord, the Catholic interpretation of Jesus Christ. That is the Antichrist. The uh, pictures that you see drawn of this effeminate Jesus Christ. Who is, that's what I believe the Antichrist is going to look like, by the way. But you will note that some people will say that Jesus was crucified through his wrists. You've heard that one, right? And they used the scientific argument that if someone was had nails through their hands, that their hands would rip off. Never minding the fact that Jesus Christ had nails going to his feet. Okay, and they kind of bent him a little bit. Okay, see, the crucifixion was to sag forward, kind of like this, with your crucified, so you would suffocate yourself on the inside. Okay, that's the whole uh, thing of crucifixion. But you see here, graving thee upon the palm of my hands, and then in, Ze in Zechariah it says um, about these wounds in my hands. Why am I bringing this up to you? This is a wabbit trail. Beg your pardon. People will tell you that, uh, no, Jesus Christ was actually, when he was crucified, it went through his wrist. I have graven thee upon the palm of my hands. And then in Zechariah, it talks about these wounds in my hands. No, no. Check my hands and my feet. There's a difference between a hand and a wrist. Okay, so I, I, I just want to point that out. Um, I'm sure you might have heard that. Yeah, he would nails through his hands, not his wrists. Okay, that's a little pet peeve of mine. Whenever I've heard, I've heard that outside my door, that, that kind of sets me off. <laughs> it does. It's like, no, nails through his hands. Okay, enough. You get the point. Don't, don't, don't buy anybody telling you that. The nails went to his wrists and went to his hands. This is not the hand. This is, from here up, that's the hand. Here's your wrist. Here's your forearm. Okay? Let's continue. Pick your part. Picking up in verse 17. Sorry about that. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers are they that made thee waste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste, beg your pardon, shall go forth of thee. Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all, as with an ornament, and bind them on thee, as a bride doth. For thy waste and thy desolate places... And the land of thy destruction shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants. And they, sh and they that swallowed thee up shall be far away. The children which thou shalt have after thou hast lost the other shall say again in thine ears, The place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, who hath begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro? And who hath brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms. 
and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. This verse right here, verse 22, can be cross-referenced with Romans 11, how we were grafted in to make them jealous. It's This is not saying that God is done with the Jewish people, by the way. Did you read verses 15 and 16? Okay, no, 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 but right here. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. We, the Gentile, have been grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous, to bring them onto their God. The, the Lord brings them onto himself. But we, the Gentile, seeing that we have their God, the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, brings them onto jealousy. And hi, I've seen that quite a bit. And if you've had any dealings with the Jewish people, you probably have seen it too. Okay? Okay? Right there. A reference to it. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their faces toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know, got that circle, that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Like children, sons and daughters. Are you getting this? Go now to Mark. Mark chapter 2. Uh, excuse me, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verses 24 on to verse 36. Mark chapter 5, verses 24 on to verse 36. And Jesus went with him. You can read the context on your own time. Okay? Check this out. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of, the plague, of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Now, some will say that when Jesus said that, he was like clueless, like, who, 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 no, no. See, I believe that the Lord knew who it was, but giving her the, the chance to come forward. Kind of like what happened in the Garden of Eden. When uh, the Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, when our Lord, our God, said to Adam, you know, what have you done? You know, giving him the chance to come clean, but instead, you know, the woman that you gave me, yeah, I did, but the woman you gave me, she gave me the tree. Then he went to the woman. It's like, what have what you done? And she's like, the devil made me do it. The serpent beguiled me. Right here giving this woman a chance to come forward. And, and his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. He knew. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Daughter, 
thy faith hath made thee whole. We're, like I said, we're going to be expounding a little bit more on 1 John, especially verses 3, uh, 1 through 2. Okay, And also we're going to hit uh, John 1, 12 through 14 in a little bit more detail, but let's continue. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogues how certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six, one verse. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse eighteen. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's read verses seventeen and eighteen. Which is a reference to Isaiah fifty two eleven. It goes Look that up on your own time. Ah, uh, you know what? We'll read 16 through 18. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. 16 on 18. <laughs> Sorry about that. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters saith the Lord Almighty. I, 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 I got to hit this again. John 14. Okay? John 14. Okay? John 14. <laughs> Verses 5 on to verse 11. John 14, verses 5 on to verse 11. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 again. Verses 16 on to verse 18. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? An idol, such as the Babylonian, Egyptian, pagan Roman Catholic Trinity. One God comprised of three persons. I'm sorry if you really believe that. I really am. I really am. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. John 14, 5-11. We have to. Okay? Yes. We have to. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. <laughs> if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him. <laughs> And have seen him. <laughs> Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? 
He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how, sh and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Yeah, yeah, what else is there to say? Exactly. <clears throat> Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Second, uh, go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Jesus Christ. No, Jesus Christ is God the Father. He is my God, my Savior. He is my Father. Woman, you say the morning again, Jesus Christ is your God and Father. You are his daughter. I am his son. <laughs> Go to Acts chapter 2. Now we're going to look at something that these nitwit, and I'm showing Church of the Living God charity there, uh, nitwit hyper-dispensationalist guys really like to mess this thing up. They really do. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit, capital S, upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Okay, now that's a reference to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. You're going to see what some of the enemies of our Lord like to say, well, so you call the name of the Lord is just for the Jews. Again, well, the problem you got about calling on the name of the Lord is that you took full of yourself. Calling on the name of the Lord is the, what is the ultimate shoe of humility. The less is calling on the greater. But no, you just make a decision up here without being broken. Oh, you're convicted. Hey. For whom this is concerned, please define for me, please define for me the difference between conviction and brokenness. Please Okay, if you if you see this, if you're going to make a uh, one of your videos, go ahead. Please define for me the difference between conviction and brokenness. Okay. Joel chapter 2 verses 28 on to verse 32. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, 
blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now see, these hyper-dispensationalist guys will say, so see, in Romans chapter 10, it's for the Jews. No, it's crossing dispensational lines. That's what it is. It's not that it's for the Jewish people. Because they tell you that Romans 9 through 11 is specifically written onto the Jewish people uh, during the, for the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they, they really, yeah, they, there are those out there who really teach that. Now, whether or not they really believe that, I don't know, but there are those out there that teach that. It, it, it's <laughs> right here, and when you find it in Romans 10, we'll, 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 I'll be reading that in another video. Um, it's dispensational lines, it's crossing. Okay, call on the name of the Lord, be saved. Okay. Believing on and calling on the name of the Lord, they they go hand in hand. It just happens. And see, if you are truly broken, knowing of what scum you are, hi, and you believe on what our Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father, did for us on the cross, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that he died for you and for me, and you're broken because of your sin, you're broken of your pride, of your self-righteousness, you know, every single one of you who is against calling on the name of the Lord, you're pretty full of yourself. Very full of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Again, what's the difference between conviction and brokenness? Both <laughs> are the same thing. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I have to. Okay, Frankie boy. You try to say they're the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay. So, sorry, I want to stay away from from that kind of stuff, but um, conviction and brokenness are not the same thing. What's the difference? <sighs> anyway, forgive me that little rabbit trail there, brother, and that kind of irks me. Now, let's go back to, first, uh, to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verses 12 on 14 again. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And remember in John 14? Yeah, okay. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 now, again. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knew, knoweth us not, because it knew him not. 
We love it. Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. As he is. And it says, we shall be like him. That doesn't mean that we will be God. But, son, sons of God. Sons of God. Sons of God. Now we saw in first, uh, what was that? In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Let's go there very quick to refresh our memories. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 18. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Okay? Son, sons of God. There are some out there saying about, well, sons of God means angels, right? When does it when did it change? Genesis chapter two or Genesis chapter six verses two through four. Genesis chapter 6, verses 2 through 4. Uh, we need to read verse 1. Genesis chapter 6, through, uh, verses 1 through 4. Make your pardon. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that were that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man note that that's a lowercase s there for that he is also for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be in 120 years there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now the sons of God, angels, those were the angels that uh, went and had relations with the daughters of men. Sons of God here are angels. Okay? Go to Job. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Verse 6. Job chapter 1. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, comma, and Satan came also among them. Satan is the anointed cherub. Thank you for all of you who corrected me on that one. <laughs> but yes, Satan is the anointed cherub. Okay? But the sons of God. Who is that? The angels. Job chapter 2, verse 1. Again. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. The sons of God, the angels. Okay? And very quickly, Job chapter 38, verse 7. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, referencing, again, the angels. Okay? These are talking about the angels. But today, you and I, if you're saved and born again, you are a son of God. You are his daughter. Okay? Through Jesus Christ. Okay? Again. Again. John... Chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 14. But as many as received him, to 
To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And 1 John chapter 1, uh, 1 John 3, 1 and 2, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knew, knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Turn to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 on to verse 33. Okay? Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 on to verse 33. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. And asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first when he had married a wife deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third unto the seven. And last of all the woman died also, Therefore in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. I love this. Verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But are, are you, are you, are you like, okay. but are as the angels of God in heaven. As the angels of God in heaven. In uh, Revelation, where John goes down by that, uh, bows down to that angel, or the, the one guy, um, he said, See thou doest not, doest it not. I am of thy uh, fellow servants. Uh, I just butchered and paraphrased uh, that like nothing, but um, that was one who was resurrected. And John bowed down to. But are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read? That which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. Very quickly, Mark chapter 12, 24 and verse 27. Mark chapter 12, verses 24 under verse 27. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. And as touching the dead, that they rise. Have ye not read in the book of Moses, how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Oh yeah, of course, of course. 
1 Corinthians 15, verses 35 on to verse 54. First Corinthians 15 verses 35 onto verse 54. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? Thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest Thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain, it may chance, of wheat, or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it was written and so it is written the first man Adam was made a living soul the last Adam was made a quickening spirit howbeit that which howbeit that was not first which is spiritual but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual for the the first man is of the earth earthy the second man is the Lord from heaven. God was manifest in the flesh. He who hath seen me hath seen the Father. Let's continue. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. You getting the tie-ins, right? Let's continue. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I shew you a mystery. A mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. <laughs> In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, quick, when we get, when we get called up, resurrected, that quick. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, it does not mean. I, I've heard people say, try to. Put Donald Trump into this. I wish I were joking. Let's continue. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So, right there, go back now to Mark chapter 12. 
Come on, fingers, work with me. Mark chapter 12, 24, on the verse 27. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. The spiritual body. And give, neither marry, or are given in marriage. Is there a female angel? Is there a female sephirim, cherubim? You get what I'm saying? Let's continue. And as touching the dead, that they rise. Have you not read in the book of Moses, how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. Again, go back now to John chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 14. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 1 John 3, 1 through 2, again. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth, not, knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him but we shall see him as he is. So today, you're saved and born again. Jesus Christ is God the Father. So, Jesus Christ is our Father. That means I am his son. Woman, you saved and born again, Jesus Christ is God, your Father. You are His daughter. How could you be someone's son or daughter if they are not your Father? And there are those of you out there who say that Jesus Christ is not the Father. And yet He calls Him Son. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, like I said, I, I had help with this one. Um, I was given certain things, and uh, the Lord kind of was like, go here, go here, go here. Like, oh, oh, okay. Um, hope this has been um, helpful for you. Uh, thank you, brothers, sisters. I love you. My brothers and sisters. Um, and we will see you in the next video, which is going to be soon. Got three I'm doing today. This one and two more. So, love you. Bye, 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 bye.